on the heels of the WD Black SN7100 that we looked at recently, SanDisk is back with a newer, faster drive, and this one's gunning for the top spot. The WD Black SN8100 NVMe SSD claims that it doesn't just keep up with premium drives from the likes of Samsung and Seagate, but it actually beats them. Big claim. So let's dive in and see if it delivers. Quick reminder though first, if you caught our last SN7100 video, linked below for you if you didn't, then you'll already know that although this drive carries the WD Black name, it's actually made by SanDisk. And that's because SanDisk now manufacture all flash storage for the WD Black brand. So now that that's cleared up, let's take a look at what this new drive is packing. Unlike the SN7100, the SN8100 supports full PCIe Gen 5 x 4 and features a DRAM cache, which means it should stay at faster speeds for longer, even under heavy continuous use. Being a Gen 5 drive, the performance bump is obvious. It boasts sequential read speeds of 14,900 megabytes per second and write speeds of 14,000 megabytes per second, significantly higher than its closest rival at the two terabyte capacity. Random IOPS are also impressive at 2.3 million reads and 2.4 million writes, compared to the top competitors at 1.85 million and 2.6 million respectively. But let's be honest, numbers on a box of one thing. Let's see what that looks like in the real world. We ran all of these tests on a standardized test bench comprising of an AMD Ryzen 9 9950X3D, Asus ROG Crosshair X870E Hero, and 32GB Corsair Vengeance DDR5. Starting with Crystal Dismark, the SN8100 didn't just hit its advertised speeds, it beat them. Nearly 15,000 megabytes per second read and well over 14,000 megabytes per second write. So far, so good. But what about practical day-to-day -day tasks? Well, we kicked off with a 120 gigabyte game file transfer from one SN8100 to another. Peak speeds were 4.6 gigabytes per second, with the lowest point still sitting at a very solid 3.73 gigabytes per second. What really stood out though was how cool this drive stayed under pressure. We will come back to that though. Next, a proper stress test, 313 gigabytes of mixed files, games, videos, documents, the lot. This test isn't just about speed, it's about consistency. We wanted to see how the drive performs when it's pushed hard and for a sustained period. The main purpose of this test is twofold. One, to see how the drives perform in the real world with large file transfers, but another to try to see where the drive starts to lose performance. Generally, the first sign will be thermal throttling, where performance is significantly reduced. Now, whilst you might not be doing huge file transfers like this, you could be gaming or using your PC for long periods where it's under load and therefore running hot. Especially gaming for hours with a hot GPU in close proximity, meaning your SSD temperatures would be naturally higher than normal. Speeds throughout this test, as you can see, remained quite stable, sitting just under 4 gigabytes per second. Though, as you can see, there are some fluctuations. Though this wasn't sustained, so is well within the margin of error. That is, until we ran the test a second time straight after. Now, this is a bit less of a realistic test, as it is transferring the exact files from one drive to the other and back again straight away with the intention of making it overheat, so that we can see at what point we can start to see performance losses. Again, as you can see on the transfer, it doesn't want to go down without a fight. We do see more consistent drops in performance here. However, they were only brief and then they shot straight back up to around 3.5 gigabytes per second, even when the drive temperatures are in the high 80 degrees. Very impressive indeed. To give all of this some context, we put it head to head with its closest rival in a thermal showdown. Same test, no heat sinks, no mercy. For the specific purpose of wanting the drives to throttle, we removed the heat sinks that would ordinarily be on this motherboard. That said, both drives managed to stay within operating temperatures on the first pass. Moving the files back from the top competitor to the WD Black drive, however, gave different results. We instantly saw the competitor hit 90 degrees on one sensor and speeds throttling down to below 1 gigabyte per second. 
As you can see from the monitoring software, the SN8100 peaked at 66 degrees despite not having the time to cool down. Fast forward a few test passes and the final numbers are in and the SN8100 was completely in its element with peak temperatures of 70 degrees, with the competitor's temperature soaring to 98 degrees, which can potentially damage the drive long term. So yes, this test was a bit extreme without the heat sinks, but that was the whole point. It shows how critical thermal efficiency is, and if your motherboard has heat sinks, then definitely use them. In summary, the WD Black SN8100 blew us away. It beat the advertised numbers, ran cool under pressure, and stayed stable no matter what we threw at it. So if you're looking for a high performance Gen 5 SSD that's consistent, fast, and future ready, the SN8100 deserves a top spot on your list. The links to buy your very own from scan.co.uk are in the description. And whilst you're there, hit subscribe so you don't miss our content. And why not let us know your thoughts on this? Is the SN8100 going to be in your next build? And what do you think of it?